Thanksgiving. I'm with my mom's side of the family. That consisted of my mom, my dad, my sister Katie, my brother Will. <laughs> Not that Will Smith. This Will Smith. My grandparents, mom and poppy, my little cousin Danielle, my aunt and uncle, Annie and Chrissy O, my aunt Lala, my uncle Tim, Aunt Mary, Peter, and Joseph, basically everybody in the Bible. <laughs> These are people that I love dearly and have grown up around all my life. At the end of the night, I looked back and it dawned on me. I barely made eye contact with any of them. Not because I'm socially awkward and not because I'm cold-hearted. I was glued to my phone the entire time. I was there, but I wasn't present. A lot of people can say that our addiction to social media is emotional, but it's chemical as well. It's fair to say that a handful of people get anxiety when they have to put their phone down for more than 10 minutes. There is something always telling them that they need it, and that something is dopamine. So I'm going to throw a whole bunch of science at you right now, but it's important you hear, so just stay with me. So let's talk about dopamine. Dopamine's a neurotransmitter in our brain that sends signals to other nerve cells. It plays a critical role in motivating our everyday behavior. For example, you get a first bite of your favorite meal, you ace your history final, your crush asks you out, your dopamine level is lighting up like a Christmas tree. But on the other hand, when you say get cut from the basketball team, flunk that history final, or even something as simple as forgetting to charge your phone the night before school, down goes your dopamine level and your mood. Dopamine is linked very closely with social media use. You feel great when you get all the likes on the selfie you posted on Instagram, or when you reach 500 views on your Snapchat story, or when your phone is blowing up with notifications. The second you hear that ring, feel that vibration, or see that notification come up on your lock screen, your dopamine level rises at that very second. But when you come back to your phone after eating dinner with your family and find nothing on your lock screen, say goodbye to the dopamine. This creates a real-life addiction. You need those texts. You need those likes. You need those followers. You need the dopamine. It is proven that social media is linked with depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues. I mean, it makes perfect sense. You are given this platform that forces you to live up to some social standard that is not realistic at all. It leaves its users feeling empty, insecure, and anxious. It's not healthy. Social media at some points has taken me away from the quality of life. And I'm sure it has for some of you as well. You know, it's funny. When adults say that famous line, kids these days. Especially when it's likely that many of the adults in this audience have checked their phone at some point since they sat down in this auditorium. You can't blame us though. It is something so common in this day and age that it's hard to shy away from. I've grown up around it all my life. I made my first Instagram account in the fifth grade. I was only 10 years old. Social media creates a huge, untethered platform for bullying. These children are posting and viewing things that come with consequences that they cannot foresee. I'm sure some, some of us could say that we found ourselves in conflict with somebody on social media. Whether it was you being targeted, or maybe, just maybe, you were the instigator. I've been impacted by this. And, like I said earlier, I was in the fifth grade, just started getting into the world of social media. I had lots of friends, until I didn't. I found myself subject to name-calling, 
being called insulting names by the same people who would never say something so rude to my face, yet felt emboldened behind the screen. No one likes you. You're ugly. Why bother coming to school tomorrow? We don't want you here. No fifth grader should be susceptible to feeling that emotion at such a young age. I should have been focusing on playing outside, wondering where my next sugar fix is going to come from, or just plain spending time with my family. But I was worried on my reputation and my looks and my ego at 10. The way social media affects adults and adolescents, it's different. At age 25, the human brain is fully developed. And that right there is the difference. Due to the lack of prefrontal cortex development in the adolescent brain, the adolescent is less equipped to handle the stress and pressure produced by Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, the list goes on and on. For example, you're in seventh grade. Your parents finally caved and let you make your first Instagram account. You're so excited to take your first step to digital independence. You go headfirst into the deep end, post your first selfie. The next day, you come into school, you overhear chatter about how ugly the photo you posted was on Instagram by a group of girls whose number of followers surpasses any number of the amount of friends you have in real life. You are instantly reminded of your social status. Meanwhile, a fully developed brain could handle the situation better. Let's be honest. High school's tough. The hallways are vicious. The lunchroom, brutal. High schoolers are judgmental. We don't want to believe it, but we are. Our emotions are magnified during our high school years. Social media has completely shifted the dynamic of how we communicate. It has created a barrier between the comfort of saying something through text rather than saying the same thing face to face. I'm no expert. I'm just a 17-year-old who's up here talking about how social media impacts people when I have completely fallen under its spell. But there's one thing I do know. These people, sadly, are not going to be here forever. Nor am I. And I don't want to go through life regarding the quality time I could have spent with them but didn't because I was scrolling through my Instagram feed, caring more about what others were doing rather than the ones right in front of me. So, my family is in attendance tonight, and I'd like to take a moment and say this publicly. While I'm far from perfect, and I'll probably fall victim from being glued to my phone from time to time, I promise to not only take my own advice and not just be there, but be present. Thank you.